Hello world and welcome back to the final episode of Applying the Logistics 2 where today we're going to show all the miscellaneous little bits and bobs that you can do inside this mob, some of which are pretty cool, some of which are pretty mundane. Starting off we have a cool little wand here called the Entropy Manipulator, made with a energy cell, two iron ingots, an engineering processor and a fluix cable, fluix crystal sorry. This Entropy Manipulator has to be charged inside a charger and this is going to be able to manipulate different types of blocks in the world. As you can see we have a various few amounts of things. If you simply right click on anything while this charges it is going to heat up this block and change it. So sand will turn into glass any types of ore will type and turn into ingots as well as clay if you have other mods involved it does it is compatible so if i do it with soul sand it turns into scorer uh from create magma block doesn't do anything uh unfortunately i don't know why that's there then we've got uh water here if you hold shift and right click it will freeze items instead of heating up as you can see here we have ice and then i can change it back to water although it switched pretty quickly because it melted and then i evaporated it which is annoying you can do the same thing with stone, you can turn everything stone with stone and stone and hold shift, you can turn it back again, which is pretty cool. If it doesn't do anything, what it will most likely do is just set it on fire like this. So uh, nothing happens with grass, I mean you can cool it down and make, give you dirt, but when you heat it up, nothing actually happens. And the last thing is lava, you can not really heat up lava of course, but when you cool it down, it turns into obsidian. Next up we've got the colour applicator, made with a 4k ME storage component, two iron ingots, a formation core and an energy cell block. This also needs to be charged inside of a charger. Now when you get this made up, you are going to need an ME chest, this is going to be where you are editing editing your uh your color applicator here so we place it inside of here and when we go into the top this is everything that is installed inside now you see that this can only hold it can hold 27 different types now what this means is 27 different types of paints so here we've got yellow paint pink paint and red paint as well as that we have got lumen paint which uh, i don't really understand the application for because when i put it on everything it doesn't really do a lot but if i take each one of these what i can do is put it inside the system here and we can store however many colors that we want up to 27 different types of course as it says in here now this obviously takes up bytes so the more you have of each one obviously the less types you're probably able to fit in. Anyway, we take this out and what we can do is we can uh, shift and scroll wheel to change between our colours. Now what we can do here is obviously we can actually colour everything in the game that would ordinarily be able to be coloured, such as wall or concrete or something like that. As well as that we can also do our cables, which is what people are more likely going to be doing it for, keeping things separate. Next we have the Matter Cannon, made with a formation core, energy cell, 4k ME storage component and 3 pieces of iron. This is essentially a weapon or gun if you, if you so wish and this is going to be put inside our charger as well and this is going to give us power of course. Now just like the colour applicator we place this inside an ME storage cell where we can put things inside of it. Now the differences between the colour applicator is that the Matter Cannon can only hold one type of uh, item inside of it. Now you can put balls inside of this and you can fire these balls and these are meant to leave sort of splodge patterns on things uh, but it doesn't seem to be working in my version so I don't really understand how that's working. Anyway we place this inside of here and we can actually use this as either a miner or a weapon. Now starting off you probably will end up using matter balls. Matter balls are made from a matter condenser which we've shown off previously when you toggle this when you want to make your singularities but with matter balls you can actually fire these as well into your matter cannons. We put these in here now this can do a certain amount of hearts of damage but a lot of people may use it for mining as you can see here. It, on softer blocks it breaks up to three and on stone it breaks up to just one. Now you can increase this as well uh, a couple of different ways. You can use stronger types of ammo. Essentially the heavier the um, ore is the more damage it's going to do. So if we get ourselves some nuggets and some iron we're going to have to switch this around here. We'll take out the matter balls and we'll put in some iron here. Or we can now have this shot three before it's now shooting four this shot one before and now it's shooting two so it's a little bit more powerful there then lastly we have gold which gold seems to be the most powerful I know that gold does up to 10 hearts of damage when actually shooting something as well but when we have this in here we can see that this goes up to six blocks here on the soft stuff and up to four blocks on the hard stuff so it can be very good for mining now there are a couple of upgrades you can do on the matter cannon, for this you're going to need a cell workbench. Place this inside of here and it will show you all the different ones you can put inside. We have the inverter card. The inverter card is essentially a way of whitelisting or blacklisting rather, um, things that you don't want into your machine. Say you have a machine that you put this in a charger and it will automatically load for you or something like that, you've set something up. 
Uh, the inverter is basically going to be your blacklist. So if I put some uh, gold nuggets in here, we wouldn't be able to put gold nuggets in here anymore if we had the inverter card. Without the inverter card, this becomes a whitelist based system instead. We also have the Overflow Destruction card. That is a card we haven't discussed before, and I'll be showing off that later. Then we have uh, the Energy card, which will just increase the amount of energy you can have in the Matter Cannon before you have to recharge it. And then you have the Fuzzy card. The Fuzzy card I'm not too sure of, because the Fuzzy card is all to do with durabilities, but I don't know of any type of uh, ammo you can put inside here that requires a durability. So if you find something like that, the Fuzzy card will allow you to put it inside here, um, basically no matter what the durability is. And then the lastly, we have the Acceleration card. The Acceleration card is going to be the main card you're going to use, as this is going to be increasing your damage output. Now you can have up to four of these in here, and if we keep gold inside of it, as we can see, when we fire this right now, let's increase this just a little bit here, and then do the Cobblestone as well. When we fire this now, this is just with one click, it now does the entire run, as you can see here, and it sort of spills over a little bit to the bottom ones. When it comes to the stone, it nearly does all the stone as well. So you definitely want those acceleration cards because it actually ends up firing a fair few more. Next up, we have the charged staff made with two iron ingots and a charged searcher's quartz. And this is essentially going to be a sword. This is just a chargeable weapon when you fire, uh, hit things. And every time you hit something, it's going to reduce the energy in it. It doesn't do a lot of damage, but uh, it's something very good early game. Which moves me on to the tools. You've probably noticed already that you can make nether quartz and searcher's quartz tools. And now each of these don't really have anything special. They're probably about the same amount as iron. They give six damage on the searcher's quartz and it's got reasonable speed. However, the Fluix um, stuff, that does a little bit better. With the swords, it will give you looting one, always looting one whenever killing any mobs. But when it comes to any every other type of tool, sorry, you've got the pickaxe and obviously the axe here. They will give you a fortune effect on it. Always will have fortune one, so it's very good for early game enchants. Something that's stupidly early game is the hand crank, made with four sticks and a piece of copper. And this is a way of manually charging up your charger if you don't have the vibration chamber yet. So there's two things you can use this on. One is is the Certus Quartz Crystals when you make those. But if you spin this 10 times, you just simply need to hold right click. And when the co cog stops turning, you know you are done. And this will send power into your charger. And when it stops like that, you don't want to keep pressing it because if you keep pressing it, what ends up happening is that it actually ends up breaking. So you don't want to be doing that. Uh, the other thing is you can put the compass in here. This will give you the meteorite compass as we know uh, from episode one. Next up, we have the Skystone Tank. This is made with eight pieces of Skystone and and a piece of quartz glass and all this is going to allow you to do is just hold 16 miller buckets or 16 buckets rather of any type of fluid that you want inside of this but note that you cannot break it otherwise it will destroy all of the uh, fluids that are inside of it so it's definitely a stationary block now you may have already seen in the previous tutorial you also have a sky stone chest as well which works the exact same as a chest something that's pretty good when you're on the move is the portable item storage cell now this is going to be a 1k storage cell as we're using a 1k component but you can go all the way up to a 256 this is also using an me item storage housing an energy cell and an me chest now making one of these you do have to charge it up as you see here and all you have to do is similar with the matter cannon and applicator all you have to do is put it in an me chest and then you can put whatever you want inside of it However, something you can do, the cool thing about it obviously being portable is that you don't have to use an ME chest, is you can right click it in the air and you've got all the same functionality as a regular terminal or ME chest. You can take things out, put things in, but it uses power as you use it and take items in and out. Another really cool thing is the view cell. This is made with a cell housing craft as you see here and a certus quartz inside. Now when you craft this as well, you can also make it with an ordinary item cell housing as you can see here and add a certus quartz to it. Now how this works is you're going to need a cell workbench. I don't know if I've actually showed how to make this. Cell workbench is simply a calculation process of two pieces of wool, five iron and a chest. And what happens is that you can actually set filters. So inside of here, I've already put in a view cell. You can put an inverter card in here, which will make this a blacklist and fuzzy card as well, which is the same all to do with durabilities. Now, what I have here is a ME terminal that is filled with various different types of items, as you can see here. What we can do now, though, is we can put this view cell, which we have tailored to all the ores. And when we place this in here, it's only showing the ores inside this drive now. Now, we know that there are other blocks in here. It doesn't get rid of them. It doesn't save you on bytes. But it's a way of having things bookmarked for what specific tasks that you want to accomplish. The next block we have is the MEIO port. This is made with three glass, two drives, a Fluix cable, a logic 
magic processor and two pieces of iron and now we showed this a little bit of how you craft the spatial stuff from previous episode however i didn't actually demonstrate how it's used so here we've got a similar concept here we've got a drive this drive is full of many different items as you can see here uh, but what we can do is actually take this drive here and we can decide to take it in and out of the system so i'm going to leave that one in here there we go, it's down there, and I'm going to take a brand new drive. Now what I can do is inside this IO port, we have a couple of different items. Mostly you'll probably use an acceleration card, but if you wanted to, you can put a redstone card on this to activate this with the redstone signal, as you can see here. Um, and then on the side here, all it is is move the output to empty if you want to, or move it out when the work is done, now, or, or move out when it's full. So these are the different modes you can do. So from this, we want to, or this is default, we were going to want to transfer items out of our storage system into a disk so when we place this disk in here it's going to start filling up and as you can see it's all full but we have it on move that move to output when empty this disk isn't empty so it hasn't moved but if i do it to when it's done it switches over to the other side as you see here now we've just taken everything out of our system because it obviously was 1k but this is a very good way of taking certain drives and you want to manipulate it in a way to actually sort things out into different locations sometimes it can be a little bit finicky and it's a hard workaround but it's a good way of clearing discs especially when you go from upgrading say you had all of this to be 1k originally and you've got to take out all the drives you've got to put it all 4k's in you can now just dump all the 1k's into the system like this so let's go on to these two upgrades now which we discussed earlier the first one is the equal distribution card made with an advanced card and a calculation processor and the next one is the overflow destruction card made with a basic card and a calculation processor now inside of this system i've got well i've got two different systems here the first one is with two different cells one is one with the equal distribution uh, upgrade and the other one is without it so the way you actually apply these different upgrades is you take a storage cell put it in a workbench and then you place it inside and it will tell you all the different cards you can put in you can also put obviously the inverse card and fuzzy card in these cells but first the equal distribution card this is a way of manipulating bytes inside of your system so here if we put in our just our regular 1k storage without any upgrades we can see that we can put in a lot of different items we've got dirt and we've got stone now this is completely full to the brim of 1024 bytes used in this mk storage cell however when i switch this out for the mk storage cell with the equal distribution what this is doing is splitting all 1024 bytes between all 63 different types of items so that means that you can't actually overflow on anything you can only have a maximum of 67 of each type of item because that is exactly how many bytes is split between one of each so i can put more in here as you can see i'll put i can basically put a stack of each in this but um i can't put any more if i get a little bit more grass blocks here uh, i can't put in another stack as you see it only puts three in so it's a good way of limiting the amount of clutter that you have inside of here now on the back of this something you can really do is put the overflow destruction card and now what we have in here is we've got a drive with both the equal distribution and the overflow destruction card and if i get myself some stone here i can actually put the stone in but it's instantly destroying it say you have a farm going and you've already set a limit of say maybe a thousand blocks somewhere you want only a thousand of that type of block coming from your farm if you have the overflow destruction part um, in here the farm will keep going and not break but it will keep it topped up and still put it into the system. So it's a very good way of limiting things without things backing up. This next item is something a little bit different. It's an inscriber tool. Now this is all about names. So the way this works is first you're going to need a piece of iron um, and you have to just simply throw this on the ground. Now with any types of knife, a knife is simply made with six and quartz as you see here, we can just right click on this iron and it gives you this little menu. Now what you can do here is name something whatever you want. All you have to do is put in a little bit of iron here and then we could just type in something like subscribe if I could spell. Now this inscriber plate is mine forever. I can put this on absolutely anything. It's basically in a reusable name tag. So what we can do here is with an inscriber, we can simply put a name tag in here. I have creeper farm in there, but what I could do is put my subscribe tag in here and then we can put an ingot in here and it will now name this ingot to subscribe. Now you can name pretty much anything. Something that's pretty good is using your storage cells so you don't get mixed up between what you want to put in there. But something that I find really useful is 
but going off what we did last time in the previous episode with spatial storage we could have all different bases all linked together in our spatial storage which is why we could have a subscribe spatial storage or we could have one that is made, turned into a creeper farm if we so wish now as you can see here as well you can rename things so they're not stuck as one thing forever this next item is something similar to what we've shown before and that is an me energy level emitter now we've shown a regular level emitter before when it comes to auto crafting but the energy level emitter the only difference is you need to charge searches quartz here as you can see so here we have a little basic setup just to demonstrate our level emitter here we've got our energy source coming through here and an inverter bus that is stopping our energy coming through currently we've got 63,000 ae it's stored inside of here we've got this set to 70,000. we want this to emit a level when the emitter redstone signal when the levels are above or equal to the limit so if we break this torch here this is going to start filling up here as you see now after a little bit of time oh there we go it's just turned on it's a little bit finicky here uh because it obviously hasn't reached this limit but uh, i don't understand why i think it because it doesn't just take into account how much is in the block itself it takes into account how much is in the whole system so there's some basic power inside of here which is making ae to per tick so it's reached that limit a little bit earlier but it gives you something very close and obviously you can invert this when you want it below um, something you can do as well is obviously you could put the 11 limiter to go into your inverter bus so you can actually stop the power coming through but sometimes when it gets on that very uh edge of the uh margins then it starts blinking between the two but i'm sure you can make some cool things with it now these last two items are pretty cool some of them are well one of them is a little bit decorative and the first one's the charged quartz fixture this is made with a piece of iron ingot and a charged surface quartz now if i make this uh night time here as you can see here these are actually light sources that can be placed on the floor, the wall, or the ceiling, and these aren't broken by water like torches are. Now, the other one here is just a piece of iron and a nether quartz, and this is a light detecting fixture. Sort of like a daylight sensor, except it's a little bit nicer. So here, it's not exactly fully nighttime, uh, so this light detecting fixture is actually giving a power of three, as you see here. We've got power of two and a power of one as it goes. Now, we have a lamp over here. This obviously isn't turning on. This needs more light. But what we could do is sort of do a delayed sort of system here. So if we place this lamp here, because there's enough power, we'll turn this on, giving this light more light, and that will give us more power to turn the other one on. So I'm pretty sure you can do some cool redstone things with this as well. But unfortunately, that is now everything to do with Applied Energistics 2. There's nothing left I can do to show you with the things you can do in this mod. I'm sure you can create some great things with everything that has been demonstrated during this series. If this video helped you out in any way, shape or form, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. It would really help me out and ring the bell button to stay notified when these videos go live. Now, once again, guys, as this is the end of the series, I'm going to be doing another poll on the community tab that will be linked down in the description about what mod you would like me to cover next. We're going to stick with 1.19. We don't know whether I'll go up to 1.19.3 or stick with 1.19.2, but I will put a list of mods for you to vote on of what you want me to cover next. But until next time, guys, take care.